So if we look at why we're not forgiving, it's just important why we look at how or why we do forgive. So once again, just connect to yourself because, you know, we all have our own path, our own inner wisdom. I think there's some universality. So I'm offering up uh, some and you can see which ones uh, land for you. Uh, we forgive because you are me. We forgive because it sets us free. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. Uh, we <laughs> forgive when we recognize we are all human and we all miss. We forgive when we accept each other just as we are. But just to be to accept in, in that state uh, place, it's like, okay, do you know what? Hey, you, you give grace. It's, it's, it's compassionate. Uh, we forgive because we are forgiven. Uh, we forgive because we choose to wake up from the nightmare. We forgive by recognizing we're all doing the best we can. We forgive because it's a way of coming home. We forgive because, uh, well, I forgive because it feels it's completely selfish. It feels like an internal release. You know, that, that constriction, it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's a carrying of energy. Mm -hmm. We forgive because it hurts. I forgive because it hurts when I don't. Uh, and I, the same one, it's I forgive because uh, I suffer when I don't. Um, and, you know, we were mentioning about innocence earlier, but it's, it's, uh, it's really a return and a recognition of our own and others' innocence and the goodness of that's underneath all the conditioned layers. Yes. We forgive when uh, there's willingness mm -hmm. to self-reflect and see ourselves um, and to recognize that we're all connected in this human experience and we've all, if you're alive, we've had grace extended to us. Uh, and sometimes in the grit of life or the pain of life, we forget that. Um, that's a beautiful notion. <laughs> those, those are all, that's a really gorgeous list that you put together. And so you can ask yourself, mm -hmm. you know, when do you uh, not forgive or when do you forgive? Because mm -hmm. uh, there's, we all have a, uh, uh, unconscious competence of why we, we do what we do. Yep. Uh, and what I really recognize when I look back on my lifetimes, when I haven't forgave, it's usually in the righteousness or the, you know, so-and-so wronged me. And then I'm usually, you know, I was trouble talking or talking to somebody or spreading to justify that. Your, yes, yeah. to justification, righteousness. It, you know, it feels yuck. It feels yuck inside to hold that energy. It's exhausting. One thing that I've learned from you and Tony is... Um, you, I, I had never heard this before explained this way, but you guys say it, you, you say it from the front of the room in a, in a seminar setting, but you also, we use it around the house and you'll say things like, like the units of energy that are being used. Like, mm. so I guess this would connect to why forgive. Mm. Um, it's like, why, why forgive someone? Yes. Like, why, why can't I just carry this around? Mm. And you guys will often, I don't know why, for some reason, this just hit me different that you'll say like, well, like the units of energy that yes. that person is, that you're giving to that person or you're giving away or, or, or you know, some, some people might language it like take your power back or, mm. you know, you're giving your power away when you do that. And you guys often put the words to it that it's units of energy. So if mm. I'm going to choose to hold this resentment mm -hmm. and, you know, not forgive or whatever, yes. some people might be like, no, no skin off my back. And mm. it's like, you have to, be willing to understand and admit like that takes units of energy to yes. your, you, you often call it uphold. Yes. You're holding this up. Yes. This identity of like, I'm mad at you. Mm -hmm. I don't forgive you. You mm -hmm. did something wrong. You, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. However that comes out. And then I'm using energy to keep this posture of yes. righteousness. Yes. Of, I don't forgive you of you don't deserve to be forgiven. Mm-hmm. And how that affects, so the why, so why is forgiveness a gift to yourself? Because you're freeing up those units of energy yes. that you can use to do something productive, creative, artistic, whatever it is that you want to be doing. Yes. And if I'm not forgiving, if I'm holding on to something or a grudge uh, or, you know, living in resentment, that's depression for me. I'm just speaking for myself. It's exhausting. It's energy and life is so precious and it's, hard enough navigating, you know, life at times, uh, you know, we're either adding to the schism or adding to the harm or adding to harmony. Mm -hmm. And that's we're or we're opening or we're closing. There's, there's themes to this, to this human experience mm -hmm. and it's recognizing. And so for those of you who are listening, we've been sharing our own experiences and some practices. 
uh, tune in and ask yourself, you know, I don't think of maybe an individual in your life that you're feeling that stuck energy or you're having a difficult time forgiving. Maybe it's a sister or a brother or a coworker. Uh, and, you know, a lot of times innocently, ego, you know, has such conviction about things that we get so righteous that we miss, okay, hey, I've done that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? If you really yeah. look inside yourself, it's like, holy smokes, yeah, I've... And so we're, we're so angry at this individual for what they've said or the tone of voice of what they said it. Or, I mean, I'm, I'm just using different examples of day-to-day. I'm using just mm-hmm. day-to-day yes. pieces. Uh, and so, you know, uh, I'm not here to tell you how to live your life or what to let go of or not. Because it's what I do recognize is forgiveness is uh, it's a natural state when we are uh, in, uh, you know, in our, I call it right mind or in alignment with our heart. Something that you just said reminded me of one little quote. And this, this is the book of forgiving by Desmond Tutu. And he wrote it with his Mm -hmm. daughter, the fourfold path of healing ourselves and our world. And there was just one little, again, back to kind of the, the units of energy and who's holding the power Mm -hmm. of that. He writes, Without forgiveness, we remain tethered to the person who harmed us. We are bound with chains of bitterness, tied up, trapped, until we can forgive the person who harmed us. That person holds the keys to our happiness. Mm. Like they, they, I don't know why that, that I, for anyone who maybe needed to hear that, yes, it's like, do you see that? You're, you're pretty much saying, here's the keys to mm-hmm. my, to my happiness. Yes. You take them. Mm-hmm because I'm choosing not to go there. Mm-hmm. So they're all yours. <laughs> and we, we've all done that. Mm-hmm. We've all, we've done all chosen that. to do that because yes, that, yes. feels, that feels what we should, that yes. feels true right now until yeah. it doesn't. Until it doesn't. And we all have the capacity to free ourselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's the power of forgiving. It's, it's giving to ourselves. It's giving to life. It blesses our families. And it allows us to be in right mind. Beautifully said. We have covered a lot of ground here in the forgiveness, apologies, atonement, amends, Mm. everything under that umbrella. One thing you mentioned as a tool and something that you connect to is mental architecture. Mm. What do you mean by that? Yes, of course. Okay, if you think of the originating thought that's creating you stress, so... Uh, my sister was so harsh with me. She was cruel. And can you believe, like, she said what she said? Oh, my gosh, I know. Do you know what? She's done that before. Building, building. Oh, yeah, she always does that. Building, building. Like, ego Got mind it. is building this architecture around it, the support system to prove itself right. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. This- and so... It's like she's, uh, oh, do you know what? You'll never believe it. Like I, I totally forgot about this, but you know, two years ago, she did the exact same thing. Yeah. I mean, how dare she? So it's like we build all these. Structure. That's what it sounds like. That's it. what it Form. looks like. That's what it feels like. So it's not, if you notice like our stories are usually, they begin with one single thought of suffering and then mind builds uh what I call an art, site. yes, like a, uh, it, it, it builds like a support around it, and that creates even more clouded vision, mm-hmm. confusion. Beautifully said. Well, I think at this moment, maybe we could take some questions that have come in from Inner Circle. Okay, fantastic. Okay, the first question was from Lauren, who wants to know, Sage, does forgiveness count if you forgive someone in your heart versus if you forgive someone face to face? Does it count? That's a great question. Well, uh, I can't say that what I'm saying is true, but it's my experience. Absolutely. (laughs) Uh, We all have people that have passed, or maybe you have somebody that, you know, 20 years ago, uh, you know, you had a circumstance that was hurtful or painful. And uh, I think that's what's extraordinary when transcend mind. And I'll go back to last night, uh, I was just reflecting and and looking at different uh, practices that I do. And I'll pray this simple prayer sometimes. Uh, Spirit in me connects to the spirit in you. I release you now. I forgive you. I bless you. Thank you. Uh, I find that to be so incredibly healing. And uh, another one that I wrote that sometimes I'll say is, 
Uh, I invite, once again, if you're a believer, if you're agnostic, it's really, you know, you were speaking to the source that breathes us life. So I invoke the light of God. I invoke the light of creation. Bless all whom I've ever wronged in any way. And for who all who have ever wronged me, bless them. I release them now. Uh, I release me now. Because, you know, there's that dance, that dynamic uh, that as we're releasing others, we're releasing ourselves. And as we release ourselves, we're releasing others. As I let you off the hook, I let me off the hook. As I let myself off the hook, I let you off the hook. Mm-hmm. And so I do believe uh, my experience uh, it would be yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I also love the way you do ancestral, ancestral yes. like clearings and like we'll do Hopoponopono on yes, ancestors mm-hmm. and you can do it on your parents, your grandparents, the parents, because like we said, yes. people's impressions and, and their references from life mm-hmm. that are passed down that make us mm-hmm. make the choices and have the behaviors, act out the behaviors that we are oftentimes are sources that could use some compassion and forgiveness Absolutely. and clearing. Absolutely. And, you know, if you think of life, we're iterating, we're evolving. And so, well, I better get this, you know, tidied up internally. Tidy it up. Or, or, or freed up, cleared up, opened up, uh, so that we can be in the world and not be affected by um, those great waves of confusion. Perfect. Can we go to the next one? Of course. <laughs> the next question is from Niraj. Niraj. Hi, Niraj. Writes, how does one get the real feeling of forgiveness in the heart rather than the mental talk of forgiveness? That's a great question. Well, if I say, say if we just have discord mm-hmm. and uh, I'm like, hey, Mary, yeah, sorry about that. Mm-hmm. And I walk out. So maybe I said lip the, service. Uh huh. Yeah. I said it's it's it could be a little bit placating. It's 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 insincere. Um, you're saying it because possibly you think you should say it. And by the way, I've done that, uh, so I know what it feels like. I know what it looks like. Or you're saying it because uh, you know you you know you're going to be seeing them later for dinner, and you don't want you want the drama to stop. Uh, that's one pass. So that's when any time that I've done that in my life, uh, it's it's lacking like the the openness, the inner freedom, you know, but when forgiveness comes from compassion, because we recognize, holy frick, I've been blind too, Mm -hmm. you know, me too. I've been so unconscious and I've been harsh and um, I've probably came across mean or crazy or, uh, and sometimes even in a moment, uh, if I'm apologizing, sometimes I won't even be specific. Sometimes I'll say like, you know, honey, I'm so sorry. I, I'm not my best self right now. And how I just came across, I, I'm, I'm sorry, um, that, that wasn't cool. Uh, please forgive me. And it's, you know, or I'm, I'm sorry, I was sometimes, and it's, 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 I'll give context to things. It's like, honey, do you know what? I was just, I was coming down and I was quick and I didn't feel like I fully connected to you. And um, can we begin again? Mm-hmm. Can we reset? That's another thing that I, we do a lot is just the, we just, the other day, I came in and I was like, Mayor, can we reset? I'm sorry if uh, in that moment I wasn't my best self. And you were so kind. You were like, of course. And it's, 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 but it wasn't just of course. It was like, of course. Mm-hmm. And, and from that place, when one person goes first, uh, and I don't know, you know, if we wait for the other person to do it, once again, it gets weird, <laughs> expectation. And we think, why aren't they saying sorry? Well, when is he or she going to come and be like, hello? And they don't come. <laughs> <laughs> and so we can sit there and be mad about it. Resent that they're not coming or they're not calling uh, or we can just simply go first. I find that path much easier. Mm -hmm. Did that answer the question? I think it did. (laughs) I think Mm -hmm. it did. How does one get the real feeling of forgiveness? Like for me too, I see how it's affecting uh, us, if it's us yes, or you. Yes. Or like to me to get the real feeling is just either walk in someone else's shoes Mm -hmm. or flip it around and look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Every situation is just a a house of mirrors. So I think getting in touch with where do we do that is a good place to get the feeling in our Uh heart. Yeah, our self-awareness and self-reflection. That's really, that's responsibility and that's Mm. that's a a life of freedom uh, because we're all sovereign beings. We're all autonomous. We all have the capacity and the gift 
to use our thoughts constructively or destructively. Beautiful. Okay, the fourth question we have here is from Demetra. Hi, Demetra. Who writes, as children, do we have to forgive our parents for the way they treated us or do we have to accept them as they are? <laughs> well, if you were sitting in front of me, I might ask, uh, what does your heart say? You know, we don't have to do anything. I think that's a gift of life is autonomous humans, we don't have to do anything. So I'd say that the answer is no, you don't have to. Uh, if it was me, I'd check in and ask, how does that, what does that feel like to not forgive your parents? What does that feel like when you look at them? What does that feel like when you think about them? What does that feel like when you hear their voice? Uh, and if you're like not as connected intimately and closely as you would like, uh, from my own experience to, um, you don't even have to say anything. You don't have to say, mom, I forgive you. It doesn't have to be that dramatic. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just continue to do your self-reflection. You can use one of these practices, inquiry or ho ho pa ono or none of them or find something that's true for you or hold them in prayer or do a process of release. And as you have your practices of whether it be meditation and prayerfulness that guides your, you know, um, Self, uh, self back to source or back to your to your nature, back to alignment. Uh, it's from that place that this is possible. And uh, so the answer is you don't have to, uh, but it's, from my experience, kinder and saner when I do. <laughs> well said. <laughs> okay, we got one more. Okay. This one's from Paula. Pa Paula? Paula. Hi, Paula. Who writes, I would love to know how to accept that you decide to forgive and move on. Mm. At times I wonder if forgiving and staying is the right decision. I know forgiveness is necessary for my own peace, but at times I wonder if forgiving and staying is the right decision. How do you know if forgiving means stay or leave? Mm, that's a beautiful uh, question. Well, I, I don't know that they're mutually exclusive and I don't even know that that's the right way to say it. I think you can, why not forgive? Okay, why not forgive? because it frees you to do so, and uh, you feel that inner spaciousness. And then from that place of alignment, from that place of connectedness to life and to your, your partner, uh, you can decide uh, whether staying is true for you or not. Mm -hmm. But then you're not leaving because you're pissed, or you're not leaving because they wronged you, or you're not leaving because... Um, you know, you've had, you've had a, 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 an argument or something. Right. You're leaving because it's true in your heart that it's just time. Right. And that's, that's so kind. That's so beautiful. And so I think you can forgive and stay. Or you can forgive and kindly and consciously leave. But it doesn't have to be from a place of uh, blame or judging another. It can actually be from a place of you can leave and be connected uh, from a place of understanding one another, uh, that's beautiful. Right. Different than like a flight response or yes. something. If you can clear mm -hmm. with that human and then consciously decide, okay, what's true for me now? Yes. Yes. I look back at myself as a younger version of myself. And I remember in my first marriage, uh, you know, didn't have the same wisdom that I have today. Uh, and, you know, a, a lot of emotion and emotionality and drama around that decision was really unnecessary. Um, I had a love for him. I know he had a love for me. Uh, I chose, uh, it was true for my own life's journey and, and I felt as well for him, uh, but I can't decide that for him. Mm -hmm. uh, and I made that decision. That decision was being true to my own heart. Uh, and I mean, I, I wish nothing but happiness for him and bless him uh, and yet didn't have the, the, the words or the understanding or the inner clarity to be able to articulate in a, that a way um, like I do today. But what's mm -hmm. beautiful is life gives us an opportunity after 20 some odd years. I had the opportunity maybe about a year ago to speak to him and it was just kind. It's, it's you know, we don't spend 10 years or seven years, even if you think they're a total jerk, even if they, you know, hurt you. If you've shared a big chunk of life together, there's, there's those ties. Yep. That uh, version of yourself, that yes. version of themselves. Yes. Giving people time. Mm -hmm. You said evolve, evolution earlier, and grow mm -hmm. and like become. Yes. 
and, and from that place, the grace for yourself and for them. So I don't know if there's a right way or a wrong way, uh, but I can just share my own experience. I left from, uh, I wasn't in a whole state of mind and heart when I left the first time of my, in my first marriage. That's honest. Uh, and, uh, but yet my heart is actually completely open and forgiving and, and uh, in gratitude for the experience mm-hmm. of the, that stage of my life. Uh, but I didn't have that understanding. Uh, so, but it feels freer and feels truer uh, for myself. Uh, and it was kind to be able to at least uh, somewhat articulate that. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, we've talked about tools and ways that you can reach folks. Yes. That maybe are from the past, past relationships, parents alive or on the other side. Mm-hmm. Um, we hope that you take some of these tools for yourself. Yes. Create some space, free up some units of energy. Mm-hmm. So if there's someone that you need to reach out to, make a call, write a letter. Yes. And know that it doesn't have to be a phone call. This can be in the silence in the interior of your own mind and heart. This can be in your meditation. This can be through prayer. It can be through a phone call. And, um, and the remembrance that there's no ask in it. It's forgiving. Mm-hmm. It's just an offering. It's an allowance. It's an acceptance of yourself, of the other. And it's, I'm really sorry I missed I love you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you to uh, all of you for uh, taking this path with us here today and for tuning in. Um, Thank you for your generous hearts and thank you for staying with us so long. Uh, God bless and we look forward to coming again. See you next time. Thank you, Mary B. Thank you, Sage. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your vulnerability and for this conversation. (laughs) Amen. Okay, well, let's, let's do uh, a meditation together. Okay. Okay. So those of you what who are listening, you can follow along. Uh, and you can think of an individual possibly that maybe you've had resistance with or you've had a challenge uh, forgiving. And uh, you can pray along or, or speak along or share this sentiment or this intention. Spirit in me connects to the spirit of you. I release you. I forgive you. I bless you. Thank you. And then as you close your eyes, you can simply picture them in golden light or whatever you see, whatever comes. Could be blue light, could be violet light. There's no right or wrong. And then drop that image. Follow your breath. Be aware of As you're breathing, sometimes as we're meditating, as we're sitting in a process, just find the spaces where there's tension. Find the spaces where there's resistance. Allow your breath to breathe into those spaces. As you inhale, we're inhaling the gift and the miracle of life this moment. And as we exhale, simply letting go. As your body is breathed in this moment, we let go now. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so, you know, these are all ways to connect to, to connect to what's true for you and inviting yourself to a space that's nourishing because it's in that tenderness, it's in that gentleness uh, with yourself, never mind with others, that uh, we're able to let each other off the hook because mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's kind. It's kind and we're able to let a, allow or let each other off the hook because we recognize we're all not so different. Yep. <laughs> you use that phrase all the time. And I just do. the other night I had like, do you ever have those moments that you're just like, you just see it differently, like something that's said or your own life. And it feels almost like cartoonish. Mm-hmm. And I, I was, I think I was going through something in my own life with my own family and brothers and sisters or something. And I, for some reason I saw like little mouse, like you put them on a hook. Mm-hmm. Like when you say like, I, I am choosing to give someone a cold shoulder or something like, you know how that feels. It might mm-hmm. feel it might feel a flush of of mm-hmm. energy and excitement or righteousness. And then after a while, it's like, 
Mm. How long are you going to leave them on the hook? Like, when will you decide to take yes. them off the hook? That's basically what we're saying. Like, if you, she's say, asking, Sage, you're asking, if we don't forgive, why don't we forgive? Mm. Like, when, how much time is it, it needs to elapse for mm -hmm. you to say, now, now I can take you off the hook, or maybe mm -hmm. it's a never, but like, think about it another way. Mm -hmm. Make it funny if you have to. Don't picture that person and keep seeing what they did to you or what you perceive that to be. Make it, you know, scramble it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Picture you putting something on a hook and like, hey, when should we let them down? I picture their little legs like, I'm sorry, <laughs> please forgive me. <laughs> when is it okay to be like, enough is enough. Hmm. Unless you're, you know, unless, I don't know, you have, you know, a completely awakened Buddha consciousness and you're loving every moment. I don't, I don't claim I do. I don't. Uh, and so how can we, you know what I mean, demonize another for doing exactly what we do? Right. I close sometimes, I open sometimes. I look to come home. I look to use these practices. We look to use these practices to come home. And it's completely selfish because <laughs> I want to feel that connectedness with life, never mind connectedness with myself. And so it's like tidying up our house. If my house is a mess, if my room's a mess, and I can be guilty of that, <laughs> I look to tidy it up. Yep. Why? To bring order, to bring coherence. It's the same thing in our internal game. And sometimes that's missed uh, in the understanding that we all meet in this. And as human beings, we all have the power to rise above uh, you know, are the thoughts that are causing such disturbance or such pain inside of ourselves. It's true. <laughs> Beautifully said. <laughs>